Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a problem involving mechanical energy and work. And this is the situation we have. We have this person, the pink person down here, they have this object here. Maybe it's a ball. It has a mass of 2.5 kilograms and the height of the stairs, not the length of the stairs, but the height of the stairs from the ground surface up to here is 8 meters. And we want to answer the following three questions. We want to know how much work does the person do on the ball when they carry the ball from here up to the top of the stairs. We want to know, once the ball is released, when they drop the ball straight down here, what is going to be the final kinetic energy of the ball? And we are also going to figure out what is going to be the final velocity of the ball just before it reaches the ground surface down here. Okay, so those are the three questions. The work, the kinetic energy, and the final velocity. Now, this person is going to carry the ball up the stairs, and we want to know how much work do they do on the ball? How much work does the person go, look at that, right like that? How much work do they do when they carry the ball from here up to here? Okay, now for work, we're going to start out talking about work. Work is the force times the distance times the cosine of theta. So we want to figure out what is the force, what is the distance, and what is the cosine of theta? And then we can solve for the amount of work. The force, when you carry something up the stairs, when you carry something up a ramp, when you carry something up like that, you apply a force. That, pl that force is applied vertically, and we'll call that the applied force. The force you apply is not parallel to the stairs. It's a vertical force. You're working against gravity. That is the applied force. That is the force that we're going to be talking about. But we don't want to put FA in there because we can say or we know that that force that we apply is equal to the weight, the force due to gravity on the ball. Okay, so the force that you apply is equal to the weight of the object in newtons, and we know the weight of the object is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We have the mass. We know the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, so we can substitute in for the force. The force that you apply is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity, or the weight of the object. Now, what about the distance? Over what distance did we apply that force? Well, that force was applied over the height of the stairs, not the length, but the height. That's the change in y, the height, the change in the height of the object. And we said that is 8 meters, so we can put in here mg delta y. Okay. Now, the cosine of theta, what is theta? Well, the theta is the angle between the displacement vector and the force that you apply. Not Fg, but the force that you apply. And these two, this vector and this vector, are parallel to each other. They're pointing in the same direction, so theta is 0 degrees. The cosine of 0 degrees is 1, so we could write mg delta y 1, or times 1. We don't write that down, so we just have mg delta y. That is the work. The work that you do on the ball is equal to the mass of the ball times the acceleration of the gravity times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in height. Now, you may notice this equation looks a lot like the equation for potential energy because when you have an external force and it's raising an object up, the amount of work you do is equal to the change in potential energy. And we want to keep that in mind because we were asked how much work you do on the ball. We could have also asked you what is the change in the potential energy of the ball. Okay, but we said this is in terms of work and mechanical energy. So we can now plug our values in, the mass of the ball, 2.5 kilograms, the acceleration due to gravity, and the change in the height, and we get that the work that you do on the ball is equal to 196 joules. Well, what happened to all that work? Where did all that work go? Where did all that energy go that you expended carrying that ball up those stairs? Well, that went into the potential energy of the ball, and that means you gave the ball potential energy, and that means now when we turn to our equation for um, conservation of mechanical energy, at its initial position, we're calling this its initial location because we're going to drop it down. At its initial location, it has 196 joules of potential energy. Well, we want to use this equation. So what about its kinetic energy? Well, you're just holding it right there. It's not moving. It has no velocity, and therefore it has no kinetic energy in its initial position. So we say the initial kinetic energy of the object is zero. That means its initial total mechanical energy, or its initial mechanical energy, is 196 joules. Now, we're going to drop the ball down. It's going to go like that. And it's going to go almost to the very bottom. It's not, tight, not quite touching the surface uh, down here. We want to know what happened to the kinetic and the potential energy. because So we want to know what is the final kinetic and the final potential energy. Well, when the ball fell down, the potential energy is due to the height, the position of the ball. Now it has no height above the ground surface. So now we know that its 
final potential energy is zero joules. Look, it had 196, and now it has zero joules of potential energy. Where did all that potential energy go? Well, as it fell, it gained velocity, it accelerated, so that potential energy went into kinetic energy, and it's basically lost all of its potential energy, so all of its potential energy was converted into kinetic energy, and now it has 196 joules of kinetic energy just as it hits the ground, just before it hits the ground, as it fell through that eight meters. I realize here it's a little higher than eight meters, but we're assuming you bent over and you leaned right there and you dropped it from eight meters above the ground surface because that's officially the height of the stairs and that's how high you changed its height. That's how much you changed its height, okay? So we figured out how much work. That was question number one. Using our work equation, 196 joules, that went into the potential energy, it had no kinetic energy. We used our conservation of energy equation and determined that it lost all of its potential energy and the potential energy was converted into kinetic energy, 196 joules. And you can see if we add 196 and zero, that equals zero plus 196 and we have conservation of mechanical energy. And that's basically true because we we're saying there's no friction and we're ignoring air resistance. Now we can solve the third question and we can answer the question is, what was the final velocity? Or what is the final velocity of the ball after it falls through that eight meters? Okay, the kinetic energy we said is 196 joules. Well, we know the equation for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So now we can solve for this final velocity squared or the final velocity actually, because we know the kinetic energy 196, we know the mass and we can solve for final velocity using this equation. Okay, so we're gonna use our kinetic energy equation and we're gonna solve for the final velocity to do that, we're going to multiply each side by 2. That gets rid of the 1 half, so we'll have 2 ke. Then we're going to divide each side by m. That'll move our mass to the other side. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides. And we end up with that the final velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. Okay, And I said, as we said, we know the kinetic energy. We know the mass. This is a constant. And all we do is plug our values in. The square root of 2 times 196 divided by 2.5 kilograms, and you get the final velocity of the ball at the very bottom is 12.5 meters per second. Look how nicely that worked out. We did the work, we did the kinetic, we did the potential energy, we did the kinetic energy, we used conservation of energy, all that stuff. We got the final velocity, all that stuff wrapped into one nice, beautiful problem like that. And there you go, okay? I think that was relatively straightforward. You do have to kind of remember when they ask you the work, basically the work and the potential energy. We could have just used MGH or a potential energy equation. We know that the potential energy is equal to, the change in potential energy is equal to the amount of work done on the object by an external force. Okay, so I hope you found that interesting. I found that interesting. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you thought that was worthwhile, please give me a thumbs up or a nice positive comment in the comment section below, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.